about what's going on between you and me to about what you and him had going on. Mm-hmm. And now you're speaking to me from the anger and from the emotions, not about what we got going on, but about the pain and the abuse and the feelings that that person caused to be in you from way back when. It's not even about you and me. It's about what he did. It's about what she did. And now you, you are punishing me because of them. And no matter how much I work, no matter how much I try, I can't get over that hump. Because you won't let it go. You won't forgive her. You won't forgive him. You won't forgive them. And so because of that, you punish me today. Or you punish your children. Because of what their parent, the other parent did. Because you angry with them. Because they look like they did. The child gets <laughs> the overflow yeah. of that anger. I was in the store one time <coughs> in Walmart. <coughs> and I was, we was shopping. And the man came there with two of his kids. And I guess he was keeping the kids for the weekend. It was his turn to have the kids for the weekend. And the kids was getting off the shelf the stuff that they wanted or, or, or that they eat. And the, um, the kid reached to get a certain item and he said, I'm not buying it. And the kid said, well, this is what mama give us. And he went out. I'm telling you about what your mama, I don't care what your mama get. You ain't with your mama, you with me. And I don't want to hear nothing about what your mama. All of that anger. Oh, Release on this child because the child wants fruit loops and not Cheerios. <laughs> but the issue is not with the child, the issue is not the cereal. The issue is the pain and the bitterness that he has and the resentment he has in his heart about what he's gone through with the mama. And so now he can't move forward, and the relationship with the children can't move forward because he's still dealing with mom. This is why the Bible says you have to learn how to forgive. Amen. You have to learn how to let it go. Amen. You have to learn how to release them from their offense. Now, let's deal with the issue of forgiveness. Or what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is me releasing you from your obligation to repair what you did or what you destroyed. That's forgiveness. Let me say that again. Forgiveness is me releasing you from the pain and the obligation to repair or rebuild what you destroyed in my life. That's forgiveness. Until you release me from the obvious, because see, when somebody offends you, you automatically put a bill on. You don't, you don't, you subconsciously, you put a bill on that person and say, this is what it's going to cost you to rebuild or restore what you just tore up. Amen. This is what it's going to cost you to reestablish the ground that you just destroyed by what you said or what you did. So in order to forgive them, you got to release them from the or restoring what they did. My Lord. Gotta let them go. Gotta let them go. That's why Martin Luther King was so powerful in his movement. Because he said if we're gonna be successful, we're gonna have to release them. Man. You cannot hold them accountable. You cannot march and say, I want you to restore, rebuild what you did. No, you have to let them go. You have to release them. You can't move forward until you release them. Amen. You can't because as long as you are holding them accountable, you're going to always keep yourself in the same pit. And you're waiting there for restoration. You're waiting there for them to repair what they did. You're waiting there for them to restore, to fulfill their obligations. That's why you waited. Mm. That's the only reason why you were. Why 
you understand what I'm saying? Man. You are keeping a light on. When you need to go in there and cut all the lights off. Thank you. And move. Yeah. When you need to go in there, cut all the lights off and have the power disconnected, you are keeping the light on. And you're looking for him or her to come and hold up that end of the bottle. You're looking for them to do it. And because, see this is what the Bible says, he says, um, hope denied, or hope deferred, same thing, hope deferred or hope denied, makes the heart sick. Hope deferred or denied makes the heart sick. When you got the light on, or when you have an expectation that you put on somebody, and that person lets that expectation fall to the ground, it breaks your heart. It hurts you. If you have an expectation on your child to be successful in school, and that child lets that hope, that expectation fall to the ground, it hurts your heart. Yeah. Now why do I have this expectation on them? <laughs> because of the time and the energy that I have invested in their life. And because of the investment of that, that I've made in them, I, I am expecting a return on my investment. Anytime you make an investment, you are looking for a return on your investment. Same thing with a marriage. Same thing with a relationship. Well, if, if, if you are with a man and, and, and you are, are, are taking care of him and, fit, and, and, and cooking for him and y'all having sex and doing all the things that you do in a relationship and you shouldn't be doing it if you, if you ain't married but you're doing it anyway and you're in a relationship, you have an expectation <coughs> on that man. Yes, and when he does not meet that expectation, it hurts your heart. Man. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And every time I put that expectation there and he lets it hit the ground, I'm hurting you. So the only way for me to remove the hurt is to remove the expectation. That's the only way. I got to remove the expectation. I got to cut the lights off. Yeah. Because as long as the expectations are there, as long as the hope is there, I'm going to look for that. I'm going to reach for that because that's what my heart wants. This is what I want. I want this relationship to work out. I want the, um, uh, 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 the dream. I want to have the family and the kids. I want to have the relationship where we come home and eat dinner. I want. I have an expectation and I want it. <laughs> I want to have the father or uh, 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 daughter relationship. I want to have whatever. I want that. But it keeps falling to the ground. Every time it falls to the ground, I am hurt. I am offended. I'm bruised. And so I fall deeper and deeper in that despair. I have to take the expectation off of that person and release them from their obligation of fulfilling uh, 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 uh. I gotta let him go. I gotta release him. I gotta, I gotta let him go. I gotta, I gotta, because if I don't, I'm hurting myself. I'm hindering myself. I'm, I'm putting my own self in prison. I'm putting my own self in prison. So this is what we have to understand about forgiving. But look at Jesus and deal with forgiveness. Let's, matter of fact, let's go to um. Man, I didn't know I was gonna teach on forgiveness today. Let's go to um the same chapter. The same chapter, let's go to verse number. Let's go to the 20th verse. Verse number 20, uh, Matthew uh, 26 chapter, verse number 20. Give me 10 more minutes and I'm gonna wrap this up. 21st says, now when the even was come, evening, 
what's coming. He sat down that he is Jesus. He sat down with the 12, his 12 disciples. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. This is the Jesus man. Sitting down at the table, mm. eating their dinner together, together. And Jesus says, Verily, verily means truly and without a doubt, one of y'all, 12, is going to betray me. Not just going to tell a lie on me, but going to cause my death. One of y'all in here who I have walked with, talked with, fed, you sit down at my table. You eat the food that I have provided. And yet you have purpose in your heart to hurt me. Now if you eat my food and you sit at my table, then I should be able to have an expectation on you to treat me a certain way. Listen, if you ain't gonna treat me right, get away from my table. If you're not going to deal with me right, then why in the world you sit down at my table and eat my food? Go somewhere else if you don't love me, if you don't want to treat me right. Don't sit down at my table, because if you sit down at my table, I have an expectation on you to deal with me righteously. Yeah. Why are you calling me like I'm your friend and then get up and talk about me? I, if you if you're going to act like my friend, then I have Jesus said, listen, I know that one of y'all sitting at this table, you're going to betray me. You're going to get me killed. You're going to get my life taken. Twenty-second verse. And they were exceedingly sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been, it had been good for that man if he had not been born. Amen. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said it. Now let me let me give you the, the, uh, the picture of how this particular thing happened. Now, the, uh, when Jesus was talking, <coughs> it just so happened that Judas was reaching into the bowl. Oh my God. And Jesus was uh, uh, talking as, G as Judas was reaching into the ball, and Jesus reached into the ball at the same time as Judas, and he said, the same one who got his hand in the ball with me my is the very one that's going to betray me. My and then Judas said, wait a minute, Lord, is it I? My God. He tricked himself. Whatever I do, do it quickly. Yes. 
You've been eating at my table for three and a half years. You've been walking with me. I've been feeding you. I've been taking care of you. When you needed something, I'm the person you called on. I'm the one you came to get when you was in trouble. But now you're going to betray me for some money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why the Bible says that you can only serve one God. Because if you got more than one God, sooner or later you're going to betray God. Amen. If you put anything over God, sooner or later you're going to betray God. He said you can't serve, you can't have but one master. If you love money more than you love me, you will hurt me for money. Amen. You will hurt me for money. Amen. So he says, go ahead, do it. Whatever I do, do it. Kiss him. They took Jesus away. Put him to death. Put him to death. In the midst of Jesus' death, he says this. He says, Father, forgive me. For they know not what wow. they he said, forgive them. Don't hold what they're doing to me accountable to them. Why? Because there is power in forgiveness. Amen. There is power in not holding them accountable. When you understand that no weapon formed against you is able to prosper, you take away the authority. Amen. When you understand that no matter how much you try to hurt me, you can't whoop me, you take away that person's authority. When you understand that no matter what you come up with, no matter how you conspire, and all of your planning and everything you come up, you can sit down, you can get together with this person and that person and come up with all kind of ideas on how to try to stop me and hold me back and hinder my life and hinder my purpose, but there's nothing you can do to stop me because if God be for me, he's more than anybody that gets me. So go ahead and make your plan. Thank you, Lord. Make your plan. Make your schemes. Make your devices. I'm still going to be here when the dust settles. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's all. Go ahead. I, I'm not even worried about your plans. Matter of fact, let's go to a place as soon as you can find this right quick before we finish this. Uh, let's go to the book of Psalms. Psalms 1, 2, or 3. Yeah, Psalms um, 2. Let's go to Psalms 2. Let's start at verse number 1. Psalms 2, verse number 1. We're going to look at um, how God looks at your haters. Thank you. Uh, I, want you to, I want you to see how God looks at your haters. Because we all got haters. Amen. Amen. Especially if you got purpose in your life. Yeah. Especially if you want to be somebody. Especially if you want to go somewhere. Especially if you want to have something. There are people who will hate you just because. I try to get my children to understand that there are people who will hate you just because. They don't need a reason to hate you. You don't need to do nothing against them. There are people who see you walk in the room and don't even know why they hate you. There are people who will look at you and despise you, and if somebody comes in and say, why you don't like him or why you don't like her, they cannot give a real reason as to why they don't like you. All they know is that when they see you, there's something, there, there's an emotional uh, 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 explosion in their heart, in their spirit, that makes them not like you. There, there's a bad taste, there's a bad feeling. They don't even know why. Mm. They can't even explain why. They, they don't even know you, and they sit around talking about, he think he's there. How you know? How you know what I think about me, and you don't even, you haven't even taken the time to sit down and have a conversation with me, but when you see me, you talk, oh, he think he, you don't know what I think. Look. Because you haven't taken the time to sit down and have a conversation with me. Maybe if you have a conversation with me, you will understand what I really do say. And then you might have a reason to really be angry with me or not like me, but you don't know because you've never had a conversation. Mm. You might have a reason not to like me. But you don't know because you've never sat down, you've never talked to me, you never had a conversation. You've already prejudged. That's what prejudice is. Prejudice to prejudge. To judge 